Hi, this is Chrissy with Portland Parks and Recreation. Let's learn about chorus frogs. There's a little brown duck sitting in the water. A little brown duck doing what she oughter. She took a bite of the lily bed, flapped her wings, and she said, I'm glad I'm a little brown duck sitting in the water. Quack, quack, quack. There's a little chorus frog swimming in the water. A little chorus frog doing what he oughter. He hopped right up on the lily pad, puffed his throat, and he said, I'm glad I'm a little chorus frog swimming in the water. Croak, croak, croak. There's a little bumblebee floating in the water. A little bumblebee doing what she oughter. She tickled the frog on the lily pad that the little duck bit. And she said, I'm glad I'm a little bumblebee floating in the water. Today I'm going to be sharing a book with you called Pacific Tree Frogs by Leslie Owen, illustrated by George Juhas. A cool mist swirls upwards from shallow roadside pools. Spring rain splashes into ditches and gullies. A tree frog stirs beneath the leaf litter. The cold spring rains wake him from hibernation. This Pacific tree frog is about the size of an adult finger. He has sticky toe pads on his front and back feet which help him climb the tall marsh grasses, cattails, and alder saplings that will be his summer home. At the pool's edge, the frog climbs a blade of sedge. His skin changes from a light green to a dull tan. Only his black eye stripes never change. With a deep breath, air fills the frog's vocal sac just beneath his throat. He calls, reek, reek, reek reek over and over again. Beneath the leaf litter, other male frogs hear the chorus leader's call. Soon the night air is filled with the music of spring. Hundreds of Pacific tree frogs call out this song for hours and hours each spring night. They cling to the grass blades and alder saplings, their skin tones matching each plant. In the daytime they are silent. At night their songs are loud and beautiful. The female frogs take longer to wake. Ten days after the chorus leader's first song, the female frogs abandon their winter homes. They plunge into the pools and the male frogs now join them. The chorus leader mates first. As the female lays her string of jelly-coated eggs, the male releases his sperm to fertilize them. The small clumps of eggs are attached to grass, twigs, or cattails in the water. This is to keep the spawn from being washed away. Mating can take two to three weeks, then the frogs will separate, with each frog finding a territory of its own. The tree frog is a predator, an animal that hunts for its food. But the tree frog does not search for its prey. Instead, it waits for movement. Then it lunges forward and catches the insect, a moth, a fly, a mosquito, with its long, sticky tongue. The frog does not chew its food, even though it has teeth. It uses the teeth to hold on to the insect, and then it uses its eyes to press down and help it swallow the insect whole. An insect sitting right beside the frog would be safe. The frog can only see it when it moves. The spawn, which are left in the shallow pools and creeks, hatches tadpoles in about two weeks. They eat the smallest animals in the water, such as fairy shrimp and mosquito larvae. They breathe through their feathery gills like fish and swim by moving their long tails. The smallest of tadpoles are prey to dozens of other animals. 
dragonfly and mayfly nymphs, minnows, sticklebacks, water boatmen, diving beetles, and even other tadpoles eat the tree frog tadpoles. By the beginning of summer, the tadpoles are froglets. Some may still have a tiny nub of a tail. It will be gone by the end of the summer. The froglets are tinier than the tadpoles were, no bigger than a small fingernail. Like all amphibians, the froglet's skin must stay moist. Frogs do not drink water. Their skin is permeable, which means water can pass right through it. The froglets are very delicate and must stay at the edges of pools and creeks, or they will dry up and die. Tree froglets are prey to many animals. The coyote, the raccoon, the otter, the skunk, the great gray owl. Bullfrogs, green frogs, rough-skinned newts, garter snakes, and great blue herons are some of the other animals that eat the tiny tree frogs. The adult tree frogs have the same enemies as the froglets, but they are better able to keep themselves safe. They do not dry out as easily as the froglets do and often will have territory some distance from a pool or stream. Also, the adult frog's ability to mimic its surroundings, called camouflage, is greater too. In Vancouver, a city in Canada, a gardener once found a red tree frog in her red geraniums. As the days grow shorter, the tree frogs must find winter homes. This is because, because frogs, like all amphibians, are cold-blooded. Frogs have no way to control their own body temperatures the way mammals and birds can. Frogs must rely on the sun to keep them warm and on water and shade to keep them cool. In late autumn, they will return to the leaf litter of the woods or will dig burrows beneath rocks and tree roots. Their bodies will slow down until it seems they are dead. Then they will sleep until the cold rains of spring wake them up again. This process is called hibernation. At one time, Pacific tree frogs were the most numerous frogs on the west coast of United States and Canada. Their spring song was heard from the wetlands of British Columbia to the farmlands of Southern California. But in the past 10 to 20 years, frogs all over the world have been disappearing. While the Pacific tree frog is not on the endangered species list yet, whole colonies of them continue to disappear from the places where they were once abundant. Tree frogs are disappearing because we are destroying their wetland homes. They need rain fills, spring pools in order to breed. Every time another roadside pool or wooded creek habitat is destroyed, more tree frogs cannot breed. If you ever get a chance to go and visit the Tadpole Pond at Oaks Bottom Wildlife Refuge, you might have a chance to actually see some tadpoles and some adult Pacific tree frogs. Sometimes people call them Pacific chorus frogs. If you should find one, you should be really careful. They're really fragile and their bodies and their backbones can easily break. And so it's best to just try to find them and observe them in their natural habitat and also we want to make sure that they're there for the future so that they can breed and lay more eggs that will turn into more tadpoles for a healthy Pacific frog population. <laughs>